Hello and welcome to the Bitcoin Show, episode 14. I'm Bruce Wagner. And I'm Ed Gell. And uh, with us today is Roger Ver, live from Japan. That's why we're at night today. We're, uh, doing, we're actually taping this at 9 p.m. Eastern because uh, Roger's in Japan and it's morning there. It's tomorrow. Or is it the day after tomorrow? No, wait, that's Australia. Oh, it's one day ahead of you, tonight. Okay, only one day ahead. Okay. So Roger's uh, joining us from uh, Japan, and he is um, the founder of uh, MemoryDealers.com. Is that right? That's correct. Got it right. Okay, good. And uh, the reason I wanted to have you on the, on the show, Roger, we had, we had never talked before uh, today, but uh, the billboard is what caught my attention. I, um, you know, I had seen that going floating all around Twitter, and uh, actually, the first time I saw the photo of the billboard that says, we accept Bitcoin, I, uh, I immediately retweeted it and said, this is marketing genius. It really is because this, you know, this, the billboard itself, the idea of doing this is just going to go viral, which of course it did. And uh, I was like, I've never heard of MemoryDealers.com, but boy, now I have. Yeah. The whole world has. So, um, and the main media also, they, they talk to us about it. They're like, oh yeah, the memory dealers, they know all about you. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, uh, tell us... Are, is MemoryDealers.com, is, are you the largest retailer, do you think, that accepts Bitcoin now? Um, I think we're probably one of the largest that <clears throat> accept it directly. Obviously, Amazon and others accept it, but that's kind of indirectly with the middleman. Mm -hmm. um, so I think at this point, we're probably one of the largest, although our, our niche is rather specialized. So. And so tell us about, about Memory Dealers. Uh, obviously, you sell memory. Is that, is, that yeah. the, is that your main specialty, the niche? Well, we, we started out uh, selling memory specifically for network equipment, such as Cisco routers and switches. And then uh, more recently, we actually sell more optical transceivers used in the sort of same sort of networking equipment. So at this point, we actually sell uh, many more optical transceivers than we actually do memory. But we still sell plenty of both. And uh, I'm glad to say we've actually gotten a couple of uh, orders where customers have paid through Bitcoins already. So that's great. That's pretty exciting to see. Mm -hmm. What is an optical trans transceiver? <laughs> uh, they're, little, they're little devices that will connect your networking switch uh, to a fiber optic cable and transmit your internet data down a fiber optic cable and then convert it, the optical wavelength into an uh, electrical signal on the other end. Oh, so that's, so. that's basically what Verizon has when we, we have fiber to the floor. So yeah, that's what they're doing. Yeah, fiber to the home and that sort of thing. We sell parts that are used in those sort of systems. So. Oh, very cool. So we can we could run our own fiber network with, the, with these devices. Within. I would love to help you with the hardware for that. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> well, we already but have I'm, fiber, but but I'm yeah. not giving up any of my bitcoins. That no, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I say, you know, we re, we we re, we accept bitcoins, but we only pay in dollars. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so, how long ago did you first discover Bitcoin? Well, I first heard of the idea of online digital cash back in the late '90s, and then uh, a couple of months ago, I was listening to Free Talk Live, which is a radio program in the United States, and I heard them talking about Bitcoin. And uh, that was towards the end of last year. And I went and looked into it at that time and thought, wow, what a great idea, but too bad nobody's using it and was really disappointed by that. <laughs> and then uh, a couple of months ago, I heard again on the same radio program that uh, the United States government went and cracked down on uh, internet gambling. And mm -hmm. I personally don't gamble at all and don't have any interest in that. But then when I heard that uh, some of the internet gambling sites were going to start accepting bitcoins as payment, I knew that bitcoins were just going to explode in popularity. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be the next big thing. And uh, I've hardly been able to sleep a minute since then. I've been so excited about Bitcoins, and they're just uh, <laughs> gaining popularity every single day. And it's really, really exciting to be something, uh, to be a part of something that's going to really change the world. Uh, I'm pretty confident that Bitcoins are the most important invention since the internet itself. It's right. the world is changing because of Bitcoins right in front of our eyes, and it's such an exciting time to be a part of this. Absolutely. People in the know, um, technical people and technology, you know, technologists and so on are so excited about it. The, I think the more technical they are, the more excited they get about it. And it's, sometimes I almost feel like it's a religion, you know, like, <laughs> mm -hmm. like you know, when, when did you accept Jesus, you know? <laughs> yeah. But uh, say like when, you know, what was the price of Bitcoin at the, at the time? Actually, at the time, then it must have been like six cents, right? When you discovered it. Can you hear I, me? I couldn't hear the yeah. last question. Oh, I was saying, so Bitcoin was like about six cents for a Bitcoin at that time? 
Uh, Bitcoins, when I first saw it, yeah, it was, it was way less than a dollar. And then when I actually uh, got real excited into Bitcoins because people were starting to use it, it was at a little bit over a dollar. And by yeah. the time uh, I actually was able to wire some money into Mt. Gox and buy some uh, Bitcoins, they were over $2 already. So. Right. Yeah, exactly. I remember, well, when we discovered it was twenty about 20 cents or something. 16, yeah. 16 cents, okay, whatever. And then uh, I remember how excited we got that morning when we saw that it had reached 50 cents. Oh, my gosh. So uh, what, what we had, we sold, of course, you know, and, <laughs> and then bought it back a week later at 77 cents, you know, and so on. It's just, it's crazy. It's like this uh, whirlwind, but it's happening very fast. Have you, have, have you been following the media reports about it? Yeah, I've been, I've been spending just about every waking moment focusing on uh, Bitcoins pretty much full time the last couple of months now and uh, <laughs> reading everything I can find about it. And uh, it's just such an amazing time to see a new technology that's going to change the world. We look pretty good for uh, focusing on it 24 hours. I know. I remember when I first <laughs> discovered it, I was like uh, literally not eating or sleeping. I was just like obsessed with studying and reading and reading and reading everything I could get my hands on about it for like about, a, I don't know, four, five, six days, something like that. I was just obsessed. I, I just didn't even eat or sleep. All I did was yeah, study Bitcoin. I had a similar experience. It's uh, honestly true. I, I hardly slept or ate anything for uh, well over a week until I actually got so sick I had to go to the hospital because I... I hadn't done anything other than study Bitcoins. Oh my hours. gosh. Well, you've, you look well. You've recovered now. But So you had Bitcoin fever. It's a, <laughs> I, I do. <laughs> that's I what do. we're going to We totally write that down, Josh. We're going to do that for the comedy sketch, uh, Bitcoin fever skit. <laughs> I want to I wanna take a quick break and just quickly say this episode of uh, The Bitcoin Show is brought to you by our wonderful, fabulous sponsors, um, if it weren't for them, we wouldn't be here. And they are CarpeVM.com. CarpeVM, C-A-R-P-E-V-M.com. Video marketing. Seize your market, say it with video. And Mezzi Grill. Authentic Mediterranean food meets modern flavor at Mezzi Grill. M-E-Z-E Grill.com. Right near Columbus Circle here in Manhattan. And TradeHill.com. The new kids on the block. The easiest way to buy and sell uh, buy Bitcoin for cash and sell Bitcoin as well. Many ways to get in and out. 10% uh, off all trades for life with this referral code TH-R141 on your screen. And also US Gold Coins. USGoldCoins.com, our trusted advisor for excellent investments in rare gold and silver coins. So uh, when you decided uh, that you wanted MemoryDealers.com to accept Bitcoin, how did you go about implementing that? A lot of people, a lot of merchants are really interested in accepting Bitcoin, but they're like, you know, how do you do that? It's, it's kind of new for everybody. Yeah, it is new for everybody, and that's uh, kind of been the biggest challenge at this point. I think one of the most exciting projects uh, that I'm working on currently and have the help of a lot of really talented people is we're making a, a Bitcoin plugin for an e-commerce shopping cart system called Magento. And uh, over 100,000 merchants around the world are using Magento currently. And uh, that plugin should be ready, hopefully, within another week or two at the very most here. And we're going to release that for free to the entire world. So anybody who has an online store that's running Magento will easily be able to accept Bitcoins for anything in their store. And I think that will really help bring a lot of additional merchants on board to accepting Bitcoins. See, I read uh, so about that. Is there another one or is, the, is this the one that I read about? Maybe I read that it was in development or something. I, I would guess this is probably the one you uh, read about. It's actually getting pretty close at this point. Uh, I've seen some screenshots of how it's going to work, and I'm pretty excited. And I'd like to thank all the guys from the Silicon Valley Bitcoin Meetup group as well. Uh, those are the guys that have really been helping me with this since uh, programming is not my forte, but uh, Isn't that awesome? they seem to know what they're doing. That is so awesome. Mm, yes. Yeah, Magento is, is it Magenta or Magento? Magento. Magento, Magento is the name of a shopping cart program. Mm -hmm that over 100,000 merchants are across yeah, the internet using. Yeah, I think it's the number one free open source uh, shopping. I looked at Magento, I couldn't remember the exact name, but yeah, yeah, you hear that, Chris? Because he's setting up uh, as his own web store too, and I told him about Magento. And I remember, um, I think it's the number one, or it's one or two uh, it's most popular. It's definitely one of the top few. Mm -hmm. And when I went to Magento's website, I saw the major, major retailers that are using it, uh, big, huge brand names. So it's very impressive shopping cart. And the fact that it's completely free open source is awesome. And so, of course, there, there needs to be a Bitcoin plugin. And have you, uh, so it's not quite ready yet. It's about to be uh, it's, it's getting pretty close. So How's it going to function? How will it work? Uh, it'll work just like a regular checkout. You can choose if you want to pay by, you know, credit card, PayPal, 
a couple of different options as well as Bitcoin. And uh, if you choose Bitcoin, it'll automatically calculate in real time what the correct number of Bitcoins to send are. It'll tell you the address to send the Bitcoins to, and then it'll confirm once uh, the, the merchants receive the Bitcoins, the merchant knows that it's okay to ship the goods. So it'll oh. work just like uh, checking out with a normal credit card or any other payment method. Man, that is so cool. I want to set up a store yes. just to play with that. I just want that. I, we're gonna set up a store just to sell something, t-shirts or something, because that is so cool. Yeah. It'll all be free and open source, so it'll be really easy for anybody to set up a Bitcoin accepting store with this software. Awesome. Now, was, uh, was MemoryDealers.com already using Magento? We're currently hosted uh, with Yahoo, and with about uh, another week, we're actually gonna migrate over to Magento. So nice. I contacted Yahoo initially and said, hey, when are you guys gonna set up your online shopping cart platform to mm -hmm. accept Bitcoin? And mm -hmm. this was after it had already been on the front page of Bitcoin. And unfortunately, our rep over at Yahoo said, what is Bitcoin? So I said, why don't you look at the front page of Yahoo.com to find out? <laughs> Ask them if they've heard they of said, Yahoo. Well, we'll look into it, but they didn't have any definite plans to make it happen. So mm -hmm. rather than wait around for them to do something, I decided to do something myself. Yeah. And uh, with the help of some other people, it's all coming together. Right. And there's a little bit of a sidebar topic, but is Magento, is that, did you do that yourself? Is it easy to use for, for a novice or is it kind of difficult? Um, it's it actually if you have basic computer skills, it shouldn't be too terribly difficult. Like anything, it takes some time and effort to learn, but it's mm -hmm. it's not uh, it's not the most difficult thing in the world for sure. Okay, and then I mean, when you set it up, I'm assuming you have probably hundreds or thousands of items that you sell. How do you import? Is that easy to import them from what yeah, you already have? Yeah, there's thanks to the free market. Uh, anywhere there's a demand for anything, people find a way to do it. And mm -hmm. there's another company that for. Uh, I think about $200 they'll import every single item from my current store into Magento. Wow. And we're talking about tens of thousands of items. So for, I think they charged around $200. I think that was pretty darn reasonable. That Very is reasonable. slick. Mm -hmm. That is slick. That's 10 Bitcoin, right? <laughs> exactly. 10 Bitcoin, you only pay 20 cents each. <laughs> and so the, the, your Bitcoin business, I guess it's, is it more catering to like miners or just anyone? At, at this point, mostly we've sold a whole pile of uh, video cards that people use for mining. We've sold a few other items that aren't really related to Bitcoins at all. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the most exciting Bitcoin orders I had was from a gentleman in South Africa. And uh, anybody who's made international purchases with credit cards in the past know that the credit card companies charge you all sorts of fees and it's a real pain. But with Bitcoin and this guy, uh, it went through so smoothly and uh, click, it was click. a really good experience for both of us. And I'm sure he has his memory and I have my Bitcoins and both of us are happy. And uh, it's really exciting to see things like that happening. Absolutely. No chargebacks, no transaction no fees, fees for either of us. It was instantaneous really, uh, cash. Everybody knows the value of it. There's no currency exchange scamming going on and percentages here, percentages there. And But did you read the headline that uh, the, the death of Bitcoin, Bitcoin's over. Did you know that? <laughs> Somehow that passed me by. Yeah, I know. It's like, wow. Who was? Which one was that that said that? Um, uh, I Fortune. Was it no? Or the I Forbes as well. I'm not sure which one it was, but one of them. Anyway, the other day I was reading these headlines, going, "Oh my gosh, these people just don't get it." It's just, it, I mean, the you know the, the the automated exchange site that that you know had 90% market share, completely hacked, and all the users' info exposed, and it barely a blip in the value. Just barely a blip. It's it's on its way back up again. I mean, Bitcoin itself is stronger than ever. So um, I, can, I can tell you this as well. Even with all the trouble at Mount Gox, uh, just by kind of dumb luck, their office happens to be within walking distance of my place here in Tokyo. Oh wow! And uh, I spent the last couple of days helping them try and get everything back together after the hack. And uh, based on the number of customers contacting them and wanting to, to get involved and buy bitcoins through them. Bitcoins are getting more and more popular every day without any doubt. They're just absolutely overwhelmed by the number of uh, people contacting them, trying Amazing. to do business with them. So. so you guys go and like have lunch together? You're just like, you're right there in the, in the neighborhood. Yeah, they're, they're right down the street. I've had lunch with them a couple of times and dinner once or twice as well. Uh, they, they definitely need some uh, additional help at their office, but they're working long and hard to, to make that happen. And uh, I think they're headed down the right path. So. Help wanted in Tokyo. If you have the skills, contact Mount Gox. I know they're looking. That's awesome. So, and you're an American guy. You said you're from California, right? Correct. So how did you end up in, in Tokyo? Oh, I ended up here over five years ago, kind of now for uh, some personal reasons. And uh, I'm really enjoying life in Tokyo. And, you know, I, I still like my friends and family in the U.S., mm -hmm. but uh, Tokyo is a really good place as well. Yeah. I know I, I can relate completely because I, I lived in Taipei, Taiwan for about a year and a half. And uh, I'm sure it's very similar. 
uh, experience. It's it's very it's love hate relationship, but there's a lot of things I loved about it. Yeah. And so you cater to a global audience as far as your uh, your hardware. Like, where's your distribution point, or do you have more than one, or how does that work? Yeah, our our main office is in Santa Clara, California, right in the heart of Silicon Valley. Uh, we have around 30-something employees over there, and then we have a small sales office here in Tokyo and then another one in uh, Korea. But uh, by far, the, the vast majority of our business is in the U.S. based out of Silicon Valley. And the, the, the source of your products, does, do, do most of them come from Japan, or is it just uh, mm -hmm. coincidentally that no, you're there? Like, like everything nowadays, most of our products come, uh, are manufactured in Malaysia or China. Yeah. Um, but most of our customers are in the U.S. or Europe. So, mm -hmm. so how does it, I mean... How is it then to run, it's mainly like an American company, but importing from China and Malaysia, and you're in, you're basically you're the remote worker in the company, right? How, does it, how is that to run a company so remotely? Yeah, well, uh, you know, it's 2011, and with uh, email and instant messages and uh, technologies like Bitcoin, it's making it easier and easier every day. So. And did you say this is the, one of the first times you've used Skype? Uh, I've used Skype a few times, but I think I only have just maybe a couple of contacts on Skype. You're, in my business, almost everybody uses AIM or MSN, so everyone just talks on AIM or MSN Chat. with everybody, and you can talk to multiple people at once that way, whereas with Skype video chat, you can only talk to one person at a time, mm -hmm. so it kind of binds things. Ah, so AIM is, uh, are you talking about video chat or audio? I'm, no, I'm, I'm just talking about uh, text messaging. Just text. Messages. Wow, you can run a whole company with text chat on AIM? That's amazing. Yeah, and I have a lot of chat windows open all the time, believe me. <laughs> you are just on the cutting edge. It's amazing. Yeah, a lot of chat windows all the time, I know. Mm -hmm. we, we do too, constantly. But that just baffles me that people can, uh, you can run a company on name. It's just the technology. What did we do before the internet? So do you see um, the percentage of sales? I mean, what's your forecast for the percentage of your sales that are Bitcoin? Well, I think the most important thing to increase the percentage of sales with Bitcoins currently is to get more and more merchants to accept Bitcoins. Mm -hmm. And uh, anybody out there that has a friend or family member or anybody you know who runs a business, ask them to accept Bitcoins. That's going to be the real key. And the, the faster that uh, businesses are willing to accept Bitcoins, the more Bitcoins uh, will be out there in circulation and the price will go up and the popularity will go up and the news coverage will go up and it will be a win-win-win for everybody involved. Right. I think that's the biggest thing we need to do. So the, the faster that happens the faster my percentage of uh, business done in Bitcoins will increase. Yeah, and uh, if you also right. have a company and you have vendors that you pay normally, ask your vendors to accept Bitcoins as payment and try and pay them in Bitcoins. That's right. I was just, we just had uh, Marwan Salem from Mezzi Grill on the other day, and we were talking about his, he's like the first re retail you know, restaurant in, uh, the, to accept Bitcoins that we know of, for sure the first one in Manhattan. And he was talking about that too, trying to talk to his uh, suppliers and asking them to... Uh, except Bitcoin, because why not? You know, it's just, uh, the, like you said, the more, I mean, a lot of people have said that this currency is not going to take off until you can buy real goods and services with it. And I, I see that. Uh, I think also it could be the other way around. Like a lot of people, I mean, originally there was mining for the individual. I remember when I turned on my computer and I made 50 Bitcoin, I was like, whoa, immediately I'm going ding, 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 ding. How many computers should I buy today? You know, and then I, but then of course that kind of passed. Now it's a specialized industry and you can't, you know, you know you're not going to turn on your laptop and uh, justify running it for Bitcoin mining. But now we're in this phase where people are buying Bitcoin as an investment because they're doubling their money in a week and or more and so on. So what I was thinking is that people are going to continue buying Bitcoin as an investment. If it keeps going up the way it has, then there's an, once there's enough money, in the Bitcoin economy, merchants are not going to have to be asked to join. It's kind of like when the internet was invented, nobody had to go knock on the door of the porn industry to say, hey, you should check this out. I mean, they were like on it, you know? <laughs> so when, when there's a huge amount of money in the Bitcoin uh, economy, merchants are just going to say, yeah, mm -hmm. it's just, it's not, we're not talking about credit, we're talking about cash just sitting there, right? But I think that it is good to encourage people. Yeah, but I think it, it's, it all starts at the customer level because uh, we're, we're into raw foods and things like that. And as a strategy, a social engineering, they always say, well, when you go to the restaurant, ask your waiter or waitress, where do you buy your chicken at? Because like, they don't normally know, but at least they'll go ask the chef and so on and so forth. So the same idea you'll, you know, everywhere you go, you should be asking, do you accept Bitcoins? And everyone's going to ask, well, what is a Bitcoin, et cetera. 
if you want uh, organic food or locally grown or whatever, you have to ask for it. Whatever the customer asks for is what you're going to get. And um, that's true. I think that's true. Anywhere you go, <laughs> do you accept Bitcoin? And they're going to go, a what, what? <laughs> <laughs> a big what, <laughs> but uh, but it's a you know it's an opportunity to educate people. When I you know I created that BitcoinMe.com site and uh, I made a, a tab there called Accept. So if you want to accept Bitcoin, you can click that. And it's just super super simple instructions for a business to to do to set up a simply set up a My Bitcoin account, get a Bitcoin address. Um, it's easier than setting up a Gmail account or something. And then uh, how to create the QR code and put it on your cash register. Pretty much you're in business. That's all you have to do. You don't have to be approved by any bank or anything. You're just done. It's like as easy as setting up email. And without anyone's permission, that's how you do it uh, real quick and simple. If you do something like a one-off business or you know, not a huge high volume business uh, or a retail establishment that doesn't have, is not going to have a huge Bitcoin volume initially. But then right. if you have a retail, I'm sorry, if you have a, uh, a web store, obviously this Magellan is, is brilliant because, or not Magellan, what is it called? Uh, Magento. Magento, I always call it. Magento is brilliant because when, there's, like you said, there's so many retailers using it. It's so, uh, all they have to do is add this plugin and they're in business. Does it, I mean, so you have to, does, does that plugin, by the way, give a unique address, a unique Bitcoin address for every transaction? Yes, it'll generate a unique address for every transaction, so that way you know who it came from, and uh, it gives your customers some additional privacy that way, and uh, hopefully it'll make everybody very happy and willing to accept Bitcoin. That is brilliant. You know, I can, you know what I can see happening is like a retail store, maybe even having a kiosk right there where, you, where they could self-service, they could order whatever they want off the website, even a, who knows, you know, even a restaurant or something where you could click and order it on the Magento site, click, 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 and do it with Bitcoin that way if it's easy enough. Is that? Uh, I think we'll see things like that coming sooner rather than later. Yeah, I can mm -hmm. see that. So, would they? Um, they're given a Bitcoin address to send the payment to, or does it integrate into one of the web-based payment services? Uh, it'll, they'll be given a, a Bitcoin address to send the payment to, and then once the payment's received at that address, it'll verify their order. Okay. It would be cool if it ha if it gives a QR code for the Bitcoin address too. Because then if it is a kiosk kind of set up, your, your phone can scan the QR code. I, I'm sure that would be very easy to do as well, mm -hmm. is offer yeah. a little 2D barcode for them to scan and send yeah. the address there. I, I'm sure that wouldn't take a very much programming at all to make that happen. And, you know, you're talking about the guys who developed that are from the meetup, the Bitcoin meetup in Silicon Valley? That's correct. And, you know, our Bitcoin meetup here in New York, we, we host here in uh, Only One TV Studios, um, the, our hackathon that has come out of that has become a weekly hackathon. They're the ones who developed, they, they're now bitcoinlabs.com and they developed the first Android app, the full, full featured uh, app, you know, Bitcoin app for Android, which is slick because th those two things will work together. You can right. just hit send and scan the QR code, boom. It's, it's happening so fast. Are you shocked at how fast this is coming, coming of age? Uh, th technology keeps uh, going faster and faster, and I, I don't know if shock's the right word, but boy, am I happy about it. I, I can't wait for it to happen. Uh, I'm, I'm so excited about Bitcoins, and I'm re I want it to happen today rather than tomorrow. So. You know, um, do you ever get asked, um, like, because there, there's been all this, uh, you know, hysterical, crazy media talk, you know, trying to associate Bitcoins with, uh, you know, illicit activities. Um, do you ever get asked about that? Because I, I actually had somebody um, contact, what was it? Oh, he wanted, to, he wanted to be a sponsor on the show is what it was. And um, then a couple of days later, he emailed me and said, no, he can't do it. He can't accept Bitcoin. His attorneys gave him legal advice that he should not accept Bitcoin. You know, do, I mean, what do you think about that? I mean, I'm sure they're just being hysterical because they, they read some article and like, oh, you should stay away from that, right? Well, I, by the same logic, you should stay away from cash because some people, you know, hire hitmen and buy drugs with cash. So That's right. It's just like any sort of tool. It's all in how, how you use it. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bitcoins can be used for bad things, but it can be used for a heck of a lot more good things. And I'm really excited about the good things that Bitcoins can be used for. The people that have a vested interest in us using the, the Federal Reserve notes, you know, um, they're, they ha the people who have a lot to lose <laughs> by, by, by the implementation of Bitcoin... Do you think that they're going to do something to retaliate against this, the way the recording industry has done against, you know, peer-to-peer -peer file sharing and so on? 
It's possible that they'll try, but what's so exciting for me about Bitcoins is the distributed nature because I don't see what they can possibly do to stop it. I mean, it's open source, the cat's out of the bag, short of shutting down the entire internet, I don't see what they can do to stop it. I know uh, the Great Firewall of China has already blocked Bitcoin.org, but tons of people in China are already interested in Bitcoin and Chinese language Bitcoin forums have started. and. Uh, a number of my vendors in China are begging for me to pay them in bitcoins, and I'm gladly going to do that for them the next time I owe wow. them some money. So, uh, yeah, I think there may be some pushback from the established powers, but I have a hard time seeing what they're actually going to be able to do to prevent it. I mean, it's, it seems like the snowball has already started rolling downhill, and nobody's going to be able to stop it. And you know, it's exciting to kind of step back and watch and see what's going to happen. You're a pioneer. Mm -hmm. It's history in the making. What a what an exciting time to be alive. Well, now, speaking of uh, China, that's an interesting thing. I didn't know that they had blocked Bitcoin.org, but um, is there any way that you know of that, that China, or any government for that matter, but especially China, could they block Bitcoin from being used there? I'm probably not the, the very best person to ask about the technology side of that, but from what I understand, as long as even one node inside of China is connected to the outside Bitcoin network, all the transactions will be able to go through just fine. And right. uh, yeah. I'm sure that there will be plenty of uh, smart people in, in China, and at least one of them will be able to figure out how to connect to the outside Bitcoin network world. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Uh, and you know, when I, I don't think it would be much of I, a problem. When I think about it, I mean, you don't have to have a Bitcoin client running. You don't have to have no. a Bitcoin node uh, running at all to use Bitcoin. All you need is a private key, and they can actually even put those on paper now. They're getting all these sophisticated ways to do it. So you really, there are a lot of ways to actually transmit Bitcoins without even having a connection to the Internet at all. As long as well, you can another, get the another data. Another example in China is lots of people uh, in China, Facebook, Twitter, and uh, what, one, one other incredibly popular website, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. So like three of the very most popular websites in the entire world are all blocked for people living in mainland China. Right. But what lots of people I know do is they hire some VPN service, pay them a couple of dollars worth of uh, Chinese money a month, and then they can access the entire internet. So I imagine it'll be the same way with Bitcoin. They can pay a couple of dollars a month, and then they can access a you know Insta Wallet or whatever online wallet they want, or mm -hmm. you know all sorts of different ways to keep track of their Bitcoins. So right. even though the Chinese government may try and block people from using Bitcoins, I don't think they'll have much success. Yeah, I think that. I mean, and you know, it's surprising because yeah, we do we talk about um, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook being blocked in China, but what's really surprising to me is all the rest of the websites that are not blocked in China. We, we really make a big deal in the U.S. about this censorship, and it is bad. It's horrible. But I talk to people in China all the time, and I, I give them websites. I say, look this website up. Read to me what it says. And I'm shocked. They can see, like, everything I give them except for Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. So and I'm surprised at how much they can see. And so basically, if they have access to any form of Internet, they can actually transmit it. They could even send it through an email. I mean, if they can send the packet of information out and it can be processed, if they can get to a web-based Bitcoin, and there's a, uh, so many new web-based uh, Bitcoin, uh, you know, clients that are, are springing up. I, yeah, I think it's just spreading like wildfire. There's just no way that, that it could be stopped. Even if they could stop Bitcoin nodes completely, it wouldn't stop people from using Bitcoin. Right. Or storing their wealth in it, for that matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, even if, they could, even if they're not transacting business in it to invest in it, and store their wealth in it. It's safer than buying those, you know, bars of gold in Hong Kong that they discovered were filled with lead, you know. <laughs> yeah, because now they're letting them buy silver and gold, but who knows, they can just recall it like they did here. Mm. Yeah, so interesting. That's, uh, it's going to be very, very interesting. And if, uh, if China is not stopping it, then, uh, you know, hopefully the U.S. will uh, realize that it's just insane. They really need to, if they want to stop crime, they should just stop the U.S. dollar. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, it's just absurd. And cars and phones, like I said. But um, let's see. One, one of the, I want to ask a question about, um, we've talked to a lot of merchants and people in business that uh, one of the things they ask immediately when, it, when, when we talk to them about accepting Bitcoins is, well, how do I convert it to USD? And that's obvious, you use the exchange site. But they're looking really more for a better answer than that, like an automatic exchange where they receive the Bitcoins because mainly they're dealing with cash flow issues and they need the USD to transact their business, obviously. So they, you know, 
there's probably people already working on this, but do you know anything about like any kind of other merchant service that would enable that? What I generally tell people is if they're trying to exchange their Bitcoins for some sort of government issued currency, they don't understand what Bitcoins are yet. Right. Bitcoins are money. That's you should right. use Bitcoins as your money. There's no, if you already have Bitcoins, there's not much reason for you to exchange them back into dollars or yen or, or euros or anything else. You should use your Bitcoins as Bitcoins and pay for whatever it is you want to buy in Bitcoin. So if you're wanting to exchange them back for a government uh, issued currency, you don't understand what Bitcoins are yet. Thank so. you. That's what I've been saying. I've been saying, and people <laughs> are not hearing. That's exactly right. Like, why would you want to? Well, can I get it back into real money? I mean, no, no, no. It is real money. It is the only real money. Is it backed by something? Is it backed by gold? No. I wish gold were backed by Bitcoin. <laughs> you know, it's the other way around. The only reason that I, I've heard that really makes sense, there's only two reasons I've heard that really makes sense for selling Bitcoin for dollars or currency. One is if you're just really, really hard up and you have to pay the rent and you're just, you have to have it. You've got to cash out to, to pay for something that you need and you, you have to do that. The other one is for a, um, a, a business with really tight cash flow where they just don't have enough dollars and they, they're getting a lot of Bitcoin. And I'm not sure if that's actually happened yet. It could be just in theory. But if somebody, if a business is uh, receiving so many Bitcoins and they, they have to pay their suppliers or they have to order with dollars, then of course they have a need to convert it. But I'm not sure that that's really happening. Any business that starts accepting Bitcoin initially, it's probably going to be a very, very small percentage of their transactions. And they, they would be wise just to keep it in Bitcoin, right? I, that, I would sure think so. The price seems to keep trending up, up, and up. So uh, <laughs> I'm definitely not interested in uh, getting rid of my Bitcoins for dollars. I'm more than happy to pay people for them as Bitcoins. And I ask the people that I pay Bitcoins uh, to... Don't exchange them for your national currency. Pay the next guy that uh, you need to pay money to with your Bitcoins. Exactly. And I think that's going to be the real key to getting Bitcoins to spread worldwide and become a, a worldwide currency that everyone in the entire world can use. Yes. Up, up, up. That's one of my catchphrases that the chat room uh, has, has uh, pinned to me is when I say up, up, up and very misleading. <laughs> but... Uh, but yes, um, the, so you, you either keep them, uh, just keep them as, an, as a savings, as an investment, or and or contact your suppliers and say, hey, let me pay you with Bitcoin and educate them about it, and th you'll probably be able to buy. You know, one of the things that happened here, we have the fifth floor of, of this building here on Fifth Avenue uh, for our studios. The uh, landlord here, we introduced them to Bitcoin, and of course, at first they bought $200 worth or something and then they, they doubled that and they're like, whoa. And then they bought a bunch more and, and then they bought a bunch more and they're very happy now. <laughs> but um, the, the thing is that, uh, what was it? It was like the, the, the very next month they, they, they were te blackberrying me in the mo on Saturday morning, can you pay the rent in Bitcoin, please? <laughs> and we're like, okay, yeah, we could pay the rent in Bitcoin. Uh, but not until 4.59 p.m. on the day it's due because <laughs> the value just kept going up and up and up. So, uh, yeah, so we, I don't know, we may be the first business to uh, actually pay our lease um, on the first of the month in Bitcoin. So mm -hmm. that's, it's very cool. Yeah, if you talk to people and you educate them, you know, very quickly they'll respond. And, uh, and why wouldn't they? Who wouldn't want to accept Bitcoin, right? Better than gold. So what other advice do you have for um, a small business or, or even a medium-sized business? Um, are there any special things that you've learned from this experience of, uh, of accepting Bitcoin? Um, I, I think the main key is uh, to accept Bitcoin and then once you have Bitcoins, use, uh, use your Bitcoins to pay the next guy down the line. And if you're real concerned that the price of Bitcoins are going to go up some more and you want to hold on to yours, Use some cash that you have in the bank to buy more Bitcoins, and then use those Bitcoins to pay your vendors. And uh, the more people you pay Bitcoins with, the more people that will have Bitcoins, and the more that uh, the, the circle will just spread wider and wider and wider until everyone in the world is going to be using Bitcoins. And, uh, <laughs> that's the what we need to be doing life. at this point, I think, is spread the word. And uh, you can spread the word by spreading your Bitcoins and using them to pay mm -hmm. for anything that uh, the, the seller is willing to accept Bitcoins for. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think you're right, definitely. It'll happen organically. Uh, the more Bitcoins a uh, merchant accumulates, pro probably the more vendors will accept them. And so that whole synergy will happen automatically. And it's not something that anyone really needs to worry about. Satoshi G is a handle in the chat room, has a good question. Um, he wants to know, how do you price your items in Bitcoin? 
Uh, with the new Magento plugin, it'll be uh, taken from the current price at whoever's the biggest exchange, uh, which currently is Mt. Gox, but maybe that'll be Trade Hill or somebody else in the near future. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it'll c convert from whatever national currency into Bitcoins at the time of the sale. At so, the time of the sale. And, and, and then uh, eventually there'll be a plugin as well for merchants who are scared to hold on to Bitcoins for whatever mm -hmm. reason. They can convert their Bitcoins at the time of the sale into whatever national currency in real time as well. In real time. I'm personally not interested in doing that, but I'm sure for a lot of merchants, they'll want to be able to do that uh, to yeah. begin with. Yeah, and for those uh, merchants that are a little bit leery about it, that's really good to have that option because then um, they, ha they have nothing to lose. It's just like credit card processing, except it's free and it can't charge back. So it's like there's absolutely no downside. Mm -hmm. And what about sales tax? How do you deal with sales tax in that situation? Yeah, that's calculated at the, at the time of the sale. Uh, unfortunately, every county's sales tax is different, so you have to have a whole table uh, that calculates sales tax for every single county within the state of California, but it'll calculate at the time of sale, and then you have to go and uh, pay that to the state. So mm -hmm. uh, that, that, the, the calculations all will be part of the software, and then you have to just file the correct forms to the state and make sure that's uh, paid for as well. And you can't pay the state in Bitcoins quite yet. <laughs> Not yet. We'll see what happens today. <laughs> Who knows if if, uh, if California will be the first state to accept bitcoins? New York is the uh, just accepted gay marriage, so you know who knows what can change. The uh, one other thing I would like to add, if I may, sure, is uh, with with people that are involved in business, uh, you know, kind of gently be persistent with your vendors and ask them, you know, every time you owe them some money, say, hey, can I pay you in bitcoins this time? And I've been doing that for the last couple of months with my vendors in China. And the first time I asked all of them, all of them said, no, why would I want any of that? And I said, well, just take a look at it, you know, think about it, and we can ask again the next time. And uh, at this point, uh, I've been doing that every time. Now one guy is just begging me every single day, hey, please pay me in Bitcoins today. I want Bitcoins as soon as possible. Pay me in another advance. Guy says he's willing to accept partial payment in Bitcoins. Another vendor says that they're willing to accept part of the payment in Bitcoins. And every single time we have uh, some payment due to some of our vendors, I ask them, hey, you want to be paid in U.S. dollars or in bitcoins, and uh, I think by just kind of gently being persistent every time you owe somebody money, asking them if they want it in bitcoins, uh, slowly but surely they'll grow more and more comfortable with the idea of bitcoins and be more and more willing to accept bitcoins as payment. Remember when gas stations used to have a thing that uh, they kind of tried to get rid of this? The, the credit card companies tried to ban this, but used to have a they used to have a signed discount for cash. They give you like you know three, four, five percent discount if you paid in cash. Pretty soon, that's what's going to happen. The, the, the websites and the companies are going to say, discount if you pay in Bitcoin. Yeah, we're actually uh, at Memory Dealers about to start a promotion that'll have something to that effect. Oh, nice. we got the exclusive. A discount if you pay in Bitcoin? <laughs> it could be You're right, a, bi a Bitcoin discount. Awesome. Oh my gosh, that's great. And when you, um, see, most of your customers, you say, are in the United States, right? That's uh, the vast majority in the United States and Europe. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you ship all over, and and you said we you ship sh worldwide every day. Okay, is it? Did you? I, I, you might have said this earlier. Forgive me if I'm at repeating. But did, is it mostly shipped from California or from Asia? Uh, the the vast majority is shipped from Asia to our office in California, and then there we do the final configuration and whatever our customers need, and then ship to the rest of the world. Okay, that's great. So from now on, we're buying everything everything that we need from uh, MemoryDealers.com. In Bitcoin. <laughs> well, you are an evangelist. They say I'm an evangelist. You're, you're just a missionary. <laughs> I, I, I've been converted. I'm Bitcoin. It's, it's the currency of the future. It's really, really going to change the way the entire world does business. Um, I tell all my vendors, too. I said, hey, if I pay you in U.S. dollars, it costs you money to receive the wire. It costs me about $40 to send the wire. Plus, it takes you a couple days to get it. If I send you the payment in Bitcoins, you get it right away. Instantly. There's no fees for anybody involved. Everybody's happy. There's no problem for anything. And, and one of the things that I think are really going to help Bitcoins become more and more popular are in uh, countries where the government really tries to control exports of currency. Mm -hmm. With Bitcoins, they don't know who you sent money to or who you got money from or where it came from or where it went to. And in countries like that, I think uh, – Bitcoins are going to be really, really, really popular, even more so than in freer countries. Yes, that's absolutely. A lot of countries have very strict, uh, you know, exporting currency laws. They have, some countries even have very strict laws that you, it's illegal to use any currency except the government issued currency for transactions. I know right. like Uzbekistan has that. They have this currency yeah. called the SOM and it's illegal to transact business in anything but the SOM, which they keep in, uh, deflating. And so the, the, the value just goes down, down, down quickly everyone's becoming impoverished very quickly. Right. So I, I can imagine in countries like that, um, 
in, in Russia and you know many many places like that the Bitcoin is is I mean we think it's amazing here and wonderful in the United States but in these places it's just essential there's no other way to really store your wealth other than gold or silver which is just too easy to steal mm -hmm. well there's already a in well, those send across the world yeah well it's in those what? countries there's oh, send a it across black the world market. exactly yeah there's already a, in those countries a black market for using dollars and other currencies yeah. so it's just a matter of that's right there's a, there, yeah Bitcoins. absolutely there's a there's a black market you know i know somebody so and so the back door at the bank and they they buy us dollars or whatever you know in exchange there's all these uh, the black market exchanges for us dollars and us dollars cash have kind of filled that need for you know in the black market in these places but now bitcoin oh my gosh you don't need any of that you know and there's no fees it's absolutely brilliant i mean it's got to be really scary if you're a central bank or if you're a Western Union or if you're a MasterCard Visa, American Express, they're, I, I mean, I don't know if they're scared yet. Maybe it's not even blipped on their radar. Like I said in that Forbes article, you know, the, I said, you know, they're just, they don't even know what Twitter is, these suits. By the way, this is an interesting topic. Do you see a difference in the age of people? If, if somebody's, you know, the generation they come from, if they're in their 70s or the 60s or their 50s versus if they're in their 40s or 30s or 20s, as far as their acceptance and understanding of this or their belief in the future of it? Well, I, th I think in general, younger people seem to be more accepting and willing to embrace new technologies. So I guess Bitcoin will be similar uh, mm -hmm. to people that are probably in junior high or high school today. In a few years, they'll say, oh, you mean you didn't use Bitcoin when you yeah. were a kid? And how did you buy things? And that people mm -hmm. didn't always use Bitcoins. So. Yeah, how did you buy things? And Satoshi will be a legend, yeah. <laughs> legendary lore. And we, we even talked about it in a previous show about um, these online games, kind of like uh, gambling type of games, which are in, right now incorporating Bitcoins as their only form of, of monetary exchange for the games, which is yeah. another realm of the same thing. Well, yeah, I mean, people, I think that uh, most people, most thinking people, and I'm not just talking about um, this, you know, citizens of the United States or something, I'm talking about people of planet Earth. <laughs> Most thinking people realize that um, you know, they don't really want the government telling them what they can buy, what they can sell, much less having eBay tell you what you can buy or sell or PayPal and all these things. You know, shutting down or your Apple. PayPal account and, can, and, and seizing all your money and then going to court and saying, well, they're not a bank, so they don't have to fall under banking regulations. Well, what are they? You know, I mean, what the heck are they? It's a, it's a digital currency that's corrupt is what it is. I mean, if they just can close your account, seize your money, no explanation and you get a form letter email that says uh, there is no recourse <laughs> there is no you know it's like okay okay thank you uh, thank you very much but um, the idea that uh, this is the people's money that people can actually transact it freely without any obstacles I mean it just seems like it's a it's a natural human right that we should have we the human beings should be able to control their own money this is revolutionary and also, it's kind of like the internet itself. Remember when the internet was born? I don't know if you're old enough to remember when the internet was born, but I am. And uh, people said, wow, there's this new thing. It's called the internet, and it's going to be big. I want to buy some stock in the internet, and everybody wanted to buy stock in the internet. Nobody knew how. You know, it was a disaster, obviously, because they bought anything that ended in .com. But now, this is like the, the birth of the internet again. But you can buy it. You can actually own it, almost like shares of the internet, the shares of the new world money. You can make them as well. <laughs> yeah, if you know how to do it. So um, do you, like, do your friends, I mean, do you talk about Bitcoin all the time and do your friends think you're crazy? Yeah, um, I was just recently <laughs> attended my sister's wedding and everybody knew about Bitcoins by the end of the wedding. Uh, <laughs> My, yeah. my sister might not have been too happy that I was talking about Bitcoins at her wedding the entire time, but uh, <laughs> everyone seemed really, really interested in Bitcoins, and uh, all my cousins and extended family now know about Bitcoins, and a lot of them are really, really interested in Bitcoins, although uh, I did find that my younger family members were much more interested and willing to accept the idea of Bitcoins, yeah. whereas uh, some of the older family members I have that are in their 50s or 60s said, oh, it sounds like a pyramid scheme or, or seemed much more skeptical of Bitcoins, but all the younger people seem to think, oh, wow, what a great idea. Why didn't somebody make this before? No, right. Bitcoin is not a pyramid scheme. Bitcoin is a religion. And uh, we are evangelists. <laughs> the church of the Bitcoin. I think that we should do that. No. no. <laughs> but it, it feels like it sometimes when you're evangelizing about something so amazing. It, you, it feels like a religion sometimes, but of course it's not. Yeah. But it's just technology. It's like talking about Facebook or Twitter. 
or whatever. It's like, I have you seen that it's so cool? Bitcoin is such an amazing, amazing, amazing idea that once people hear about it, they do feel like they need to evangelize it to the entire world. Yeah. Because it's such a wonderful, amazing, world-changing idea, and it's going to change the world for the better. It's going to give people back control of their own money and allow people to decide what they're going to do. And they're not going to have to ask permission from Visa or MasterCard or PayPal or anybody else who they send and receive money with. And so. also in this case, I think that uh, for once, it's actually a very good thing that government wheels spin very slowly because they're saying it's going to take years you know, for them to get this legislation before they can even figure out what it is and get their mind around it. By the time they figure out what it is and then they try and draft some legislation, people are going to be going, what are you talking about? I'm not giving it. It's like a smartphone, like when the iPhone came out, like boom, everybody had one. You know, it's going to be like that, like boom, everybody has Bitcoin, everybody uses Bitcoin. Starbucks, I'll bet you Starbucks is going to be accepting Bitcoin. I don't know, I'm not, I'm not going to bet exactly when, but the, all the <laughs> retailers will be accepting Bitcoin and it will happen so much faster than we think. And when that happens, as that happens, um, the government isn't going to have time to react. By the time the people realize mm -hmm. this is not illegal, this is not criminal, this is not shady, this is just money. That's all it is. There's, there's nothing that they'll be able to do. Because you, it's, like, it's like the government saying, we're going to take away your internet. We're going to take away your email and your text messaging. I don't think so. I really don't think that anyone's going to vote for that guy. People, I read an article one, uh, you know, recently I was talking about where it says that you know, this is not going to sit well with lawmakers. I'm like, since when do we care what sits well with lawmakers? What are lawmakers the king? You know, and we're the, no, 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 no. Lawmakers work for us, the people. And so this is the people's money. And I think that as people realize it and we evangelize it and uh, educate people, it's, it's just spreading like wildfire. It's amazing. I, like I said, you know, I've done so many media interviews. By the way, since you did that billboard, you've probably got a lot of attention. Have you had any media inquiries uh, to ask you about it? Yeah, I've had uh, media contact me from all over the world, uh, from countries all over the world have been asking me about what made me accept Bitcoin, why did I do the billboard? Why did I do all sorts of things? And uh, I think that billboard must have been one of the very best uh, investments as far as Bitcoin advertising. We're also doing a, a national uh, Bitcoin radio ad that's airing on over 100 radio stations around the country. Mm. But uh, I think the billboard's gotten even more attention than the radio ad itself. So yeah. that billboard really seemed to have uh, caught even though attention. Probably a, a tiny, tiny fraction of people actually saw the billboard. Everybody saw a photo of the billboard, and that's, that's what, as soon as I saw the photo of the billboard, I'm like, oh, that's yeah. marketing genius. That's just marketing genius, because to, to, that made headlines in, in itself, that somebody bought a billboard saying, we accept Bitcoin. It's like Mezzi Grill. I mean, they, you know, it's a, it's a Mediterranean restaurant. They just happen to be the first resta restaurant to accept Bitcoin, and then they're, all of a sudden, they're being interviewed by routers and... Uh, uh, Al Jazeera English, and it's like, oh my gosh, this little little tiny restaurant um, is fantastic. But boom, they just blew up with they never dreamed of such media exposure. You'll probably get more as a result of this show, because you know I guarantee you, reporters are going to see this and they're going to go, oh, I want to get that guy. I want to get that guy. I want to talk to him. I've got questions for him. So chat room, what what questions do you have? Um, for Roger about, uh, about the uh, actual acceptance of Bitcoin or uh, evangelizing Bitcoin. Any good questions? Mm -mm 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 -mm. What do you say to people who, um, who say that, you know, uh, Bitcoin is going to have a crash, that the bottom is going to fall out and it's going to, um, you know, lose its value and so on? I think Detractor. it's pretty clear that that's not the case. I mean, with the recent hacking of Mt. Gox and uh, all the problems that were caused there, the price barely took a dip at all. And mm -hmm. uh, I think that, that shows right now that Bitcoin is here to stay and it's not going anywhere at this point. Uh, if Bitcoin were going to crash and drop down to nothing, it would have happened last week. And it didn't happen. Bitcoin's uh, on the way up, up, and up. And uh, I don't think anything's going to stop Bitcoin at this point. It survived this. It can survive anything. Let me, let me just take a really quick break and one more time thank our sponsors who... If it weren't for these guys, we wouldn't be here. So please express your gratitude to our sponsors. Um, call them, email them, visit them and patronize them and thank them for supporting Only One TV and The Bitcoin Show and El Show de Bitcoin in Spanish language every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern. And they are Carpe VM, C-A-R-P-E-V-M.com. They will make the most brilliant 
video for your website, whatever product or service, service it is that you're marketing, an intro to whatever you're doing, they will create um, video marketing, seize your market, say it with video, carpevm.com. And Mezzi Grill, as we talk about all the time, great, uh, uh, where authentic Mediterranean food meets modern flavor and accepts Bitcoin. <laughs> Mezzi Grill, M-E-Z-E, grill.com. If you're in New York, you're passed through New York, make a special point to go there. They had, they had a story of somebody who was on his way to the airport. And he says, no, I got to go to Mezzi Grill. I don't care if I'm going to miss my plane. I got to see the place that takes Bitcoin. And tradehill.com. Of course, Trade Hill, the uh, online exchange that's getting all kinds of attention right now. They've been very supportive uh, with this outage and, and problems with Mt. Gox. And um, they're very supportive of the entire Bitcoin community. Tradehill.com. Use the referral code TH-R141 and get 10% off all your trades for life. And U.S. Gold Coins. You want to diversify uh, your investments, then uh, buy some uh, rare U.S. gold and silver coins. USGoldCoins.com, our trusted advisor for excellent investments. Uh, Andy Gauss, a brilliant, brilliant guy, uh, money expert extraordinaire. You'll, you'll see him on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. here on The Real World of Money. He's the guy who owns U.S. Gold Coins. He's phenomenal. So I have a question. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask you about, um, since Bitcoins are, uh, you know, transparent to a degree, uh, by you providing your Bitcoin address for people to buy your, your services, and your hardware, um, like, do you have any uh, concerns about privacy as far as uh, people using the address and going to Bitcoin Explorer and finding out exactly how many transactions you've transacted? Blockchain. Well, with the Magento plugin, it'll generate a unique Bitcoin address for every single transaction, so people won't know how much money was sent to any address other than the one that was given for their own order. So they'll have no idea how many other orders I've gotten that uh, people paid with, with Bitcoins or, or any merchant for that matter. So it'll give a, a very, very large amount of privacy to the merchant. And uh, it'll, I think customers will like that as well so that people won't know who they sent their Bitcoins to. So, so, so how do you do it again? The, the, what it is is, let me explain. This is a fundamental thing about Bitcoin that a lot of people don't understand. If you have a small store where you just uh, have one Bitcoin address and everybody sends it to it, then anyone can check the number of deposits to that address. Or if you have a donation, like if you're a charity and you publish a Bitcoin address, then everyone can see how many donations went to it. But if you have an automated system like, like, uh, like uh, they're using where uh, it, each transaction is separate, it generates a brand new address for every single purchase. So if you check that address, you're only going to see that one purchase. And so the address is unique for every transaction exactly. or for right. unique for each customer? For every transaction. Every transaction is unique. Got it. Yeah. So oh, it's like a throwaway cool. address. They just use it one, once and then it's gone. And the system maintains it. So it's, it takes a little bit more automation. That's why they have a plug-in for this Magento. Got so it's, it. It's all oh, automated. Great. Yeah. Very slick. Wait, I knew that we knew this was coming. We just didn't know when, how fast. It's so great. It's coming soon. Yeah, and this, is, this has got to be fantastic for Magento, too, because as a project, they're probably going to get a lot of people migrating to Magento specifically because of that plugin. It's a real synergistic thing, right? Mm -hmm. And people using the Android app in conjunction with it and so on. I think so. Right now, it costs thousands of dollars and hours of work to be able to accept credit cards as payment. With Bitcoins, you can be up and ready in just a few minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Someone, um, uh, what, what, what is his name in the chat room wants to know? <laughs> Um, how many orders have you done using Bitcoin? Um, coming up on 20, -ish, around 20, I would say at this point. Around so. 20. And how long has it been since you, since you began accepting Bitcoin? Maybe two months now. Two months. That's pretty good. 20 in two months when you just started. I mean, that's a, it's a brand new thing. Did you do the bill, the billboard right away when you started accepting yeah, the Bitcoin? The billboard took, uh, I don't know, maybe two or three weeks to get the design and then order the print and get everything together. But uh, mm -hmm. we started on it pretty quickly. So. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you must have been contacted by a lot of people in Silicon Valley saying, hey, what's up with this Bitcoin thing? How is that working yeah, out for you? A lot of our other local businesses that we do business with started contacting us and saying, you accept Bitcoin? And I said, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them didn't even know what it was at that point, but they, they saw the billboard and then they contacted us asking us about it. So, uh, Isn't that cool? Yeah, I think the, the, the sign itself really catches people's attention where it yeah. says, you know, we accept Bitcoin peer-to-peer -peer cryptocurrency. And when yeah. people kind of hear peer-to-peer -peer cryptocurrency, they think, 
oh my gosh, Ooh. what is that? And it catches right. their interest. Something in straight out of the bat cave. Yeah, it's about building the critical mass <laughs> and reaching that tipping point. We need to buy a billboard in Manhattan, don't you think? <laughs> and maybe it's been done. <laughs> it won't be received so much attention. So um, let's see. What do you th- what do you see as the uh, the future? Do you do you, do you pr- have any predictions about um, really cool new developments when it comes to uh, merchandising or you know retail sales accepting Bitcoin in the coming months? I, th- I think in the near future, we're really going to see Bitcoin become one of the major currencies in the world. Uh, right up there with the, you know, the dollar and the euro and the yen and pound sterling, you're going to see Bitcoin right up there with it. And uh, it's going to make international travel just so much easier because you can just pay in Bitcoins anywhere in the world and not have to deal with any sort of currency exchange companies. Well, how long do you think that's going to take before it's really kind of treated like, a, like an equal player at the table with, with the dollar and the euro? I, I would guess we're talking about just a couple of years, maybe, maybe less than five years even. I, the world wow. changes really quickly at this point, and uh, Bitcoin is a world-changing technology. You're a man after my own heart. That's exactly what I would have said. And what is your prediction on the value of Bitcoin? This is going to be uh, an interesting one. What do you think it's going to be by the end of the month, and then six months out, and a year out? Give me those three guesses. By, by the end of the month, I would think uh, we only have, what, three days left, maybe 20-something dollars? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I, I think from there, it's, it's, it all depends on the exchanges at this point. Uh, a lot of people that I know have been trying to buy Bitcoins, and they complain, oh, it's so difficult to get Bitcoins. You know, I'm a smart guy, and I had such a hard time. How is the average guy going to be able to ever figure out how to buy Bitcoins? And once uh, that problem is solved, I think we're really going to see the Bitcoin uh, price skyrocket. Mm-hmm. And I think it's uh, in the very near future, we'll see multiple hundreds of dollars of Bitcoin, and then thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars per Bitcoin. And I think that's coming uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, don't blink or you're going to miss it. Tens of thousands of dollars. What do you think it'll be in a year, a year from now? June of 20, uh, 2012? Yeah. I would guess over $1,000 easily. Wow. Buy Bitcoin. No. <laughs> we don't give financial advice, as you know. We just say up, 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 up. <laughs> but uh, it's an exciting thing. It is amazing. And... Uh, Thank you so much for, for taking the time out of your busy day uh, running a big company. And uh, uh, we really have enjoyed this chat. We have to have you on again for sure. My pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much for having me. Thank you. And uh, check out memorydealers.com uh, for all of your memory and uh, optical System networking network needs. needs. Right? Yeah. Check it out. Memorydealers.com. And they accept Bitcoin. Thanks, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for our sponsors, too. Same time tomorrow. Thank you.